Hey, Zio. Hey, wait. Hey, first y'all gon' make me put a n on a shirt. Dream zombie pull up Rolls Royce, that's a hearse. Uh, now I'm the bad guy when that energy return. Wait, five, four, three, two, nice guys finish first. Yeah, I got my karma really hidden different. I got good can do. Better. All right, so what's up? It's Ray Rock from Rock Magazine, and we are here with Mike Zombie. Hello, thank you for having me. Yeah, so glad to have you here. No, so, for sure. we definitely want to get your whole story. We're getting into all the music. Mm -hmm. um, so, we're out here in South Jersey. Yes, sir. You on. are, Heck. you're definitely one of like the hottest producers out of Jersey right now. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, so, just tell me, um, what was it like for you growing up out here in like Wildenboro? <laughs> What was um, it like? It was it was fun. I had a I had a nice upbringing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like man hunt, playing hide and seek. You know, mm -hmm. going to the courts, playing basketball. Yeah. Going to school. I was a class clown. You know what I mean? Just being fun. I ran into a lot of uh, people at my release party last night. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I had to say on the mic, like you know what I mean? I used to be a class clown, but it's not that no more. You feel what I'm yeah. saying? Like a lot of work. You feel what I'm saying? From 13 until now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, um, I don't know, it was, it, was, it, was, it was very fun. Like, I feel like I had a good... We're, we're the last of the real, you feel what I'm saying? Like, the nice yeah. babies, you know? Especially right. Especially my area, you know? Yeah. And outside, playing. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, I feel, feel like I had a good childhood, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was dope. Yeah. So, um, at what point did you get into music? Um, did you start off, because you're a producer, but you're also mm -hmm. a rapper. Mm -hmm. So, did you start off um, with production or rapping? You know... Uh, it was it's funny i started off rapping first mm -hmm. I, I really looked up to like little romeo and little bow wow okay like yeah person, like rap name was little mike and i used to write in my composition okay you know I mean? <laughs> like, yeah write raps or whatever and then um that's time went on you know what i'm saying i figured out how to make music with a uh, software and then um my mom had bought me fl studios you know what i mean at 13 and then mm -hmm. i just started getting into it like that yeah started making like funny videos on youtube with my friends rapping and shit so yeah then after that you know what i mean i just started taking this real serious my mm -hmm. friend over here reg like we started a group called airborne well they had already had a group called airborne yeah at like 16 and it was like mike you could really rap mm -hmm. and i came over there making beats and shit and then they it was like yo really do this shit for real so mm -hmm. i started making making beats for them and then producing and then I started taking the series for real. Yeah. And got out of hand, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, what at what point did you say you started taking it serious? Um, my friends told me last night that I took it serious at thirteen when I started doing wow. it for real. So yeah, okay. When I first started doing it, so one of the first major beats that you created mm -hmm. um was Started from the Bottom mm -hmm. by Drake. Mm -hmm. Um, so how did that, how did that beat even come about? So, um, <clears throat> shout out to my boy, Holler the Don. Um, mm -hmm. I was in college, you know what I mean? I was doing my thing. I was like spamming people on Twitter, mm -hmm. just sending my link. I had this thing called Tweet Deck where I could tweet from like five different, um, Twitters. Yeah. So you got to see me in, in, your, in your mentions, you know what I mean? So I was mm -hmm. sending beats or whatever. And then, um, I got his attention. We started DMing back and forth. He started to help me before even meeting me in person. Mm -hmm. Sending my beats to like artists in New York and outlying areas like Lloyd Banks and J.R. Ryder. Mm -hmm. And then um, he got in contact with Drake because Drake was like really into battle rap. Yeah. So um, he pretty much uh, gave Hollow his email. He mm -hmm. was like, yo, he called me. He was like, yo, I got Drake's email. He want to hear some of your shit. I'm like, all right, bet. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I sent beats in like, February, the summer, mm -hmm. and then October 21st, yeah. 5-21-2012, 20, like the exact moment. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need to make something happen. So mm -hmm. my daughter like was a year old. My mom had just got laid off from her job, and I was on academic probation. So yeah. shit was all fucked up. <laughs> so I sent the email one more time. I was like, something got to shake. So I sent the email. I left my um my phone number in there. 20 minutes later, he texts me, he's like, who's who's my zombie? It's Drake. I like the beats. I'm like, oh, shit. So I text Hollow, and I'm like, yo, who, who's playing on my phone? Mm -hmm. He was like, it's probably him. That's the way he talks. So okay. the morning after, he called me. He like, yo, this shit is fire. I want to fly you out. And I called my guidance counselor. I was like, I'm out of school, and I dipped. So yeah, <laughs> okay. before you know it, I'm out in Atlanta. So. Yeah. 
And um, what was that like for you, um, you know, that moment where, um, you know, you've just been on this grind for so long and suddenly, like, one of the most popular rappers is, like, tuning into your stuff. What what did that feel like for you? What was that experience? Mm, for me, even, like, nice la like last night, it's kind of like a outer body experience, you feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's like you're there, but you're not there, you know what I mean? It's like... yeah. Imagine, like, the person sitting in front of you is your guidance counselor, and then in the next month is, like, your favorite rapper who you've been yeah. like, trying to produce for. It. It's, like, a, it's, it's in, inexplainable. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. After that, uh, another major, I would call it, like, a monster track that you um, produced was the Love Me No More. Yeah, they don't love you no more. Yes. DJ Khaled. You know what's crazy? A friend said last night, he was like, yo, bro, why wasn't this song bigger? A lot of people don't understand that Khaled wasn't the Khaled that he is now. Yeah. And on top of that, that was his first Jay Z feature. I want to say he got five now. Mm -hmm. So if you switch God did with They Don't Love You No More, what? Yeah. That would have been a whole different situation. Yeah. So yeah, that and that was like I thought that was like a hot track. Like it still it's is, definitely sure. me memorable. I mean, you know? that song like that beat alone like still that shit is crazy to me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? That beat like everybody was like like I I be on Twitter and shit like I could take I got thick skin. So people are like, oh, all he does is samples. All he does is samples. I'm like, all right, bet. So I, when Khaled called and asked for the beat, I was like, all right, bet. I'm gonna make this one from scratch so they yeah. can't say shit. Uh huh. So. It was started from the bottom, sample, cool. And I was like, all right, I'm about to give him some real me shit. This yeah. is me, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There was a lot of, like, major artists on that. Um, but at what point did you find out Jay-Z was going to be on the it? The day it came out. On, um, wow. So what happened was I went out to L.A. for the Grammys in 2000. 14 mm -hmm. and one of my friends Reezy Renegade he a producer he was like yo bro you got a monster with Meek Mill and French they was the only people on it at the time uh-huh it was like a year before he was like I was like what the beat sound like he was like uh it's just bells on it like, I bet I was like I Kelly just bought two beats first of all he bought two beats and only used one so oh, shit thank mm -hmm. you Kelly for that you feel <laughs> what I'm saying and then um he was like yeah Meek and French on there I'm like word so fast forward a year later April, I want to say, was that 2016? Um, Callie had posted the the cover art. I'm like, Meek Mill, French Montana, Jay-Z, Rick Ross. Uh, I'm like, what the fuck? I texted him, like, yo, who produced this? He texted me, he was like, zombie on the track. I'm like, nah, stop playing. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? And then Callie yeah. was, I mean, uh, Funk Flex was premiering it on Hot 97. Mm -hmm. He so did. He played, like, the first 15 seconds, and I heard my, my, my tag. I'm like, oh, shit. Mm -hmm. We in the car going nuts, so... Yeah, they brought it back mad times, and they, like, kept going to commercial before Jay-Z's uh, verse, and I was like, but I mean, I seen the cover art, and I knew his name was on it. I was like, damn, that's crazy. So I yeah. found out when it came out. I ain't even gonna lie, another surprise with Khaled, a lot of people don't know this, when I was in Toronto for OVO Fest, he had he told me to come to the club. He was like, I got a surprise for you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When Remy Maha got out, he had put it on a remix. People forgot about that, but yeah, he, uh -huh. I was the first person to have Remy Ma on a song when she got out of jail. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. <laughs> A lot of people don't know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you've gone on to produce like lots of tracks for multiple like hot artists. Mm -hmm. um, do you? Where do you? Where do you pull your inspiration from? Timberland, Dre, Ye, um, Swiss, mm -hmm. um, and. I don't know, just life, you know what I mean? Yeah. Life? Yeah. I miss it. I got a top five producer. Pharrell, my bad, yeah. Yeah, okay, Pharrell was good, too. Yeah. Do you feel like, because you kind of seem like you, even throughout it all, have st still been able to, like, stay grounded. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that that's true? Uh, yeah. Like, you still are able to, you know, just, I don't know. <laughs> like be a person <laughs> just like be i don't know like, i mean i've changed spiritually and mentally yeah like, other people are probably like i don't think i changed 100 percent. that's one thing i've heard a lot last night like when i was at my release party like mm -hmm. 
people, people, they resonate with me. You know what I'm saying? Because right. I'm not a dickhead. I'm not an asshole. You know what I mean? I say in my song, I was like, I could really be an asshole at the shit that I did. You know what I'm saying? But I'm mm-hmm. not. I feel like I don't get That doesn't move me. That doesn't yeah. make me feel good. That doesn't, it doesn't do nothing for me. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of important to, you know. And another thing is because when I was coming in, everybody always told me like, the same people you see coming up is the same people you're going to see coming down, regardless of where you at in life, spiritually, mentally, after life, right. this life. So yeah. that doesn't scare me because th- that's my character. Mm-hmm. Some people might get this and do... Uh, it's like it's like this. People will see me and they be like, bro, you need to do this. You need to act like this. I'm like, if you had this, you would do this. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But you don't have it for a reason because you probably would do that. That's right. why God didn't give it to you. He gave it to me. Yes. Yeah. Currently, are you signed? Yeah, I'm still under Sony ATV. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. so you're still signed but to independent Google. as an artist. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. So basically, like everything you do production wise goes through like OVO. Yeah. Okay, okay. Um, are there any other things that you're working on right now? Yeah, um, Wave Tech. Please download my new app, you feel what I'm saying? It's and for, what is Wave Tech? It's from Music Pros. It's pretty much like the Uber of music, you know what I mean? To make your mm-hmm. own hours, link up with other people who do music, you know what I mean? And um, also, I just partnered up with King Ice, you know what I mean? I'm mm-hmm. just partnering up with them to be the new designer for their new jewelry. Oh, neat. Okay. I mean? So, collection should be out the end of January. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah. Um, do you feel like... Um, being a producer and also being an artist, do you feel like you're still transitioning into your artistry? Or are you more focused on one than the other right now? I would say one more has more focus just because of the caliber of people that I have done it with. Mm -hmm. But my friends know, like, I've been doing this since I was 16. So, like... yeah. Before I started from the I say it in songs all the time. Before I started from the bottom came out, I had Buzz in the City rapping like mm-hmm. before, and then started from the bottom. So it's like started from the bottom and then my music. It's like you put the two together. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So now you listen and started from the bottom. Like oh shit, he raps too. So it's like okay, now I got the fan base, and then mm-hmm. I keep doing this, do shit for the Olympics. Da, 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 you know yeah, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> you know me as a producer, but at the same time, it's like mm-hmm. I still rap. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. I got songs with French Montana. I've been on songs with Joe Budden. I've been on songs with, you know what I mean, this person, that person. It's just what you're checking for. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. One of the songs I heard you on recently that was kind of um, hot in the city last summer mm-hmm. was DJ J Hood, um, The oh, Heartbroken yeah. 2020. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So um, talking about that and being from Jersey, mm-hmm. Um, with this whole dance culture that's, you know, becoming a lot more popular now, and then you have Jersey Club. Um, mm-hmm. Where do you see Jersey Club, you know, going in the future, just like music wise? It's already went. You seen? Yeah. Drake made a dance album. Yeah. He is literally Jersey Club mm-hmm. and Heartbroken. Do you remember the year that that song, that song came out? Heartbroken. What was the? The original one. Twenty twenty. Yeah. I've been doing this shit like Yeah, right. You feel what I'm saying? And people just doing it now, you feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's we've been dancing to this shit since two thousand and seven, you feel what I'm saying? Like this yeah. is our culture, you know what I mean? So Yeah, and Jersey club music is like yeah. a big part of the culture. And I'm not gonna lie, you feel what I'm saying? Jersey club music came from Baltimore and Baltimore we used to call it Philly, that. you yeah. know what I mean? D Macking and shit like that. Like it's all like a it's a weird South Tri-State thing, you know what I mean? So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, like, nobody in New York was doing that shit. You feel what I'm saying? This is yeah, way no, before yeah. drill, you feel what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, it's like, we making Jersey Club drill type shit. So, yeah. I see it. I mean, it's already went. Beyonce done made a dance album. Drake done made a dance album. You mm-hmm. feel what I'm saying? So, it's already went. They're yeah. Top tier. Yeah, yeah. And, like, um, was Jersey Club music something that you were definitely tuning into, like, in the earlier years, because yeah, I know yeah. growing up in Jersey, like all the house parties, like yeah. we're playing it, but yeah, we sure. called it Baltimore back then. But yeah, yeah. I'm talking about MySpace days, like oh seven, mm-hmm. oh six, like we was in the crib dancing house parties, getting a Wally, you know what I mean? Like yeah, yeah, was, that's what we was doing. Right, right, right. 
before it became mainstream, before people even knew about it, like, that's yeah. how I started producing, honestly, mm -hmm. was doing that. Yes, yeah. So what is your current take on some of the other, I guess, hip hop subgenres like drill or um, different mm, things like I that? I feel like it's, it's dope. Like everybody has their own identity. You know what I mean? You got Fabi in New York doing his thing and then you yeah. got the drill type. Well, it's not even, it's crazy because like, I feel like Chicago rappers don't even sound like drill no more. I feel like mm. it's just like, I don't know. I don't even feel like Chicago has a sound right now, to be honest. I feel yeah. like drill's more in New York, you feel what I'm saying, Brooklyn, and then down it's south. heavy in the Bronx, too. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie. Down south ain't never lost it since Lil Jon came. That's a fact. And yeah. West Coast be doing their yes. thing. Yeah. But I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I'm glad that we starting to have our identity with the with the Jersey drill, to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. But I don't know. It's It's... It's funny now because like you can't tell where somebody's from by listening to their music no more. No, you can't. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but yeah, it's like, I yeah, like it. yeah. It's like it's all kind of like melding together at yeah. this point. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um. So, what do you think about Jersey? Kind of, I would say, climbing up there to compete with California a little bit. You think so? Um, That's a motherfucking compliment. A little bit, because um, I don't know if you heard, Lionsgate is building like this huge film studio in Newark, New Jersey. For real? Yeah. Damn. Yes. Man. Yeah, and marijuana's legal. Facts. So, <laughs> Facts. you know, it's a, it's kind of creeping up there just a little bit. We're like mirroring, you know, New York City a little bit with that, but yeah. I love that. Yeah. What do I think about it? Yeah, what I do you think it. about it? Yeah. yeah. I, love it. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, coming from Jersey, everybody from Jersey knows this. Mm -hmm. We're in the middle of Philly and motherfucking New York and we get a lot right. of we don't get enough shine as, as we deserve, you feel what I'm saying? There's a lot right. of fucking legends from North and South Jersey, you feel what I'm saying? I just said North Indeed. and South North and South. But <laughs> Yeah, man, we we deserve our motherfucking respect, like we are a fucking state that has contributed so much to the game that it's like yeah. immaculate. Like, listen to my song Southside Anthem. Like, mm -hmm. all the people I named in the punchlines, like Lauren Hill, Tupac fucked with the Outlaws, like mm -hmm. Joe Button, you feel what I'm saying? Queen Latifah, it, it, the list goes Capone, shout out to my nigga, you feel what I'm saying? Like, yeah. mad people, you feel what I'm saying? Like, Jersey is just like so mm -hmm. underrated. Yeah. And also, they. Fetty Wap, you know what I mean? Fetty yes. Wap, fucking diamond. Like, yeah. come on, dog. Yeah, and they filmed the VMAs in Newark also of this year. Of course they did. You so, know what I'm saying? But they, guess what? They ain't, they ain't really put it out there like that, though. Yeah, right, right. Everybody so. was in Jersey two weeks ago. Yes, yeah. Right. No, I think it was last week, yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah, a lot of, it's a lot of cool stuff happening here. MetLife Stadium in Jersey. Mm-hmm, yeah. Like, a lot. come on, dog. Yeah. Um, so what would you say is next for you? Um, you're still, we know we're always going to hear those fire tracks from mm -hmm. you, you know, Zabi on the track. Um, what are some other things that you're thinking about getting into right now? Mm, one, getting back into real estate. Um, okay. Two, um, I, I don't really know, to be honest. Yeah. Like, I'm doing a lot right now. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be lying to motherfuckers and be like, I got this going on. Like, no. What I have going on is what I have going on. I want to focus on that and, and see yeah. that through. So, pretty much my King Ice deal and, of course, making music mm -hmm. daily and, you know what I mean, working on my app. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so um, yeah. And the Nice Guys Finish First album. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of was the process that you were going through um, with the... You, it's all self-produced, right? Two songs I didn't produce. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what what kind of process were you going through with just like putting that together? Were some of the songs like things you had like in the tuck, like? Um, it was a long process. This album took me it's twelve songs, and it took me three and a half years to do. Oh wow! Okay. Because one, the pandemic. Yeah. Um, I had a lot of deaths in through twenty twenty. Shaking back from that, getting back in the mold, being at this studio, that studio. So like, um, I don't know. Like the album is a roller coaster. Like, I'm braggadocious at the front, and at the end, I'm very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Um, in the middle, you feel what I'm saying I came up with a song, 
at my mom's house, like, all right, this is how I feel, you feel what I'm saying, triumphant, like, mm -hmm. and then anybody could get it, I'm back in that mode again, you feel what I'm saying, it's like an emotional roller coaster the whole yeah. time, you know what I mean, so, the process was like being in the studio at, in LA, at my mom's house, or um, at my house in LA, um, just, it was just, it was just a lot of vibes, or somebody sending me some shit, mm -hmm. I don't know, just, it was it was an emotional roller coaster. That was the process. To be honest, I would be in the garage. I don't know why. Like my mom's house just sparks a different type of yeah. Because it's energy. like your home base. You yeah, know? you know what I mean. It's <laughs> yeah. just a different type of energy. So mm -hmm. pretty much those three places would be like the the creative space for for the album. But mm -hmm. yeah, you know what I mean. Off the top, just rapping and just saying how I feel. Yeah. So you feel you definitely took your time to like put yourself into the album yeah and i ain't gonna lie everybody's been saying it but i listened to the two projects that i'm not even gonna say their names the two projects that people say that like well one project that people say is my best mm -hmm. and this one i don't know at this point like it's it's like either a tie or this one's better yeah yeah so, well you know, i'm really happy with it though that's good yeah, yeah. always evolving <laughs> for sure um so yeah um i think that's about it yeah. <laughs> it was so dope having you here no nah, thank you for having me yeah absolutely and um yeah that's it. Yeah, thank you for having me already know time is. Dolly on the track